So isn't it awesome that we are finally at a point in the evolution of our society, uh, especially in places where LGBT folks are are accepted and celebrated, that we no longer need to be so reliant on others, especially for our protection. And what does that mean? That means that we can be self-sustaining. We can even be those people that help change the world. Do you want to be part of changing the world for the better? So if you want to be an LGBTQ leader, here are five traits that we have found that all LGBTQ leaders have. So you're listening to Queer Money episode number 284. Today, we're sharing those five things that all successful LGBTQ leaders do and how to do them. So you too can become an LGBTQ leader. We make the Queer Money podcast for you. So please remember to post your money questions in the Queer Money Facebook group. And we may answer your question in an upcoming episode. Now on with the show. So this particular episode is actually inspired by an article that we wrote several years ago for Forbes um, about how there weren't enough LGBTQ leaders right. in corporate America and how that's a problem. So there's a lot of talk today about diversity and inclusion, um, but we don't think even today that there are still enough LGBTQ people leading that discussion in corporate America. It's still kind of being led by um, other people. And we want to make sure that LGBTQ people leaders uh, have a seat at that table to lead that discussion, and that we actually get more LGBTQ leaders in C and E suite positions within corporate America to help lead that change. Well, and I, I think that 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 we know that that has to start uh, for a lot of folks. That starts at the lower levels, right? We need to start reaching for something higher. We can't just go jump to the C and E suite levels, but that can be we can be aspirational for that. And I think there are a lot of LGBT folks who desire that or think about it, but there are, there are, there are things that hold them back, right? right? And we know from a lot of studies that uh, we've read and been a part of that there are a lot of LGBTQ folks who sort of cap themselves out sort of at the, 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 the middle management position because the higher up you go in corporate America, the more visibility you get. And not a lot of us like to be completely out and open, especially with strangers uh, is because sort of kind of carry that baggage from our past. But we think that this is integral, not only to um, spread more equality inside and outside the workplace, yeah. um, but also it help close the sexual orientation and gender identity pay gap um, that still exists today. If we have more LGBTQ leaders um, sort of making the pay decisions, uh, they can help provide that equity that we've all been sort of pining for for generations. Right. And I think the other thing to think about is that it sets the example. A lot of us, I think, especially those of us who are um, maybe older millennial or older than that, we didn't have examples, uh, not on TV. We didn't have examples in entertainment. We didn't have examples. And we clearly did not have examples in the workplace of what it's like to be an LGBT leader. Yeah. And so it's when you think about doing it, it's not just for yourself. It's not just for the, the financial gain and for the pride in what you can do for yourself. It's also being that example for young LGBT people who want to reach for more, but are, are struggling to see those examples. Now you're touching on our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the five common traits that all effective LGBTQ leaders have and how you can start incorporating them into your life. Yeah. So the first one here is that LGBT leaders, if they want to be effective, they have to own the fact that they're queer. You know, Harvey Milk said that every gay person must come out as difficult as it is you must come out. And the, the there's a lot of reasons why coming out is really important for folks who want to lead, right? I understand it's not easy for everyone to come out and there are places in the country or maybe uh, inside certain corporations where it's still not ideal or easy to come out. Um, and I would suggest that maybe it's time to think about moving on from those places, right? But um, it, it's important to come out. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this to kickstart this. And one of those is, is to join, if your company has it, the employee resource group, ERG, or business resource group, or affinity group that is for the LGBT community. So a lot of companies, especially large companies, have these organizations, they have these groups. Oftentimes they're, uh, they're 
individuals who inside the company have already come out and they want to identify themselves as um, individuals who are looking for opportunity and a, a way to take a lead. And this, this is a great way to start it by getting in line with or joining that group of individuals who want to work pro or pro that for the company. Exactly. And there are a lot of, uh, I think that in the bigger cities, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, whatever, um, these employee or business resource groups seem to have a, a lot of members. Um, it's within the company in the sort of red states or in the, in, the, in the middle of the country that yes, these affinity groups still exist for the company, but they're so so much smaller. Um, they don't have sort of the support that the sort of the bigger city locations within the company do. So if you're in one of those bigger cities, make an, a, a conscious effort to try to connect with the uh, your colleagues that are in sort of the, the redder states or in the middle of the country to make sure that they feel like they have the support because it's a little bit scarier for them to sort of live up to this leadership expectation than maybe it is for you because you're in a more um, inclusive liberal environment typically. Yeah, I'll throw out there also, if you're going to be a member of one of these groups, if you're going to join an affinity group, don't expect that just joining gives you the opportunity to become a leader or gives the opportunity to advance in your career, right? Everything that you do in these groups is looked at uh, by individuals. So if you do nothing, you're not being seen. So get out there, be active, do something in the group, help the group to, uh, to facilitate whatever is the company is asking it to do, whether it's things in the community or providing information for business projects that they want to involve LGBT, the LGBT community in get active in those groups. And one of the things that that can do is can help you build confidence as a leader. We're going to touch on this a little bit more, but I think it's really important to remember that you cannot be a confident leader when you're hiding something about yourself, right? Absolutely. So if you're not out, and I'm, I'm going to give the example, when I was a child, I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. We've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I struggled to to let people know that I was a part of that religion. I didn't really want people to know. I hid that. And so for that reason, I oftentimes didn't uh, put myself in situations where kids would ask what I do outside of school. Uh, so I stayed away from kids. And especially as I got older, I literally would stay away from almost everyone. I had very few friends in school. And that was by my choice, because I didn't want to have to quote unquote, come out as a Jehovah's Witness. And so I think a lot that ends up happening for a lot of folks who don't want to come out or are fearful of coming out. It helps to erode Unfortunately, it helps to erode our confidence, especially in the workplace. Exactly. Now, number two might not be a sort of a light bulb moment for a lot of folks, but it's definitely important, and it's definitely important to balance this appropriately. But that is, to, uh, most LGBTQ leaders who are effective are confident. They they have an air of confidence about them. Um, so, for a lot of us, this requires doing a lot of the hard work that we've talked about on this podcast over the last five and a half years of sort of burying those limiting beliefs that we have, the, all that self-doubt, that negative chatter we have mm -hmm. going on inside our, our brains and sort of doing that hard work to sort of overcome that. Um, now, I think when I, I said, you know, when I kicked this point <laughs> off, I said, it's a healthy balance, right? right. To, to have confidence. Um, there's a difference between having a lot of arrogance or even a little bit of arrogance and having confidence. And we want to be confident and not arrogant. And I think um, uh, some people, especially if they are feeling insecure or have a lot of doubt, but they want to sort of exude this air of confidence, actually show arrogance. And so it's, it's a healthy balance that we need to, to, to have, um, but do the work to find the, 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 the muster that you need to be able to, to have the confidence that you have to be a leader within your organization and outside in your local community. And, and I think that one of the important things to remember about confidence is oftentimes confidence comes from the experiences that you have. When you have an experience, you know something about a situation, you can speak confidently about that or act confidently about that if that sim similar situation comes up again. Uh, but if you feel like you lack confidence, maybe the, the best thing to do is to create a path of micro wins. Look at things that you can do that you know that you will have a small amount of success. They don't need to be big things, right? And it, 
it, it's just creating those micro wins on a regular basis every week. Think about what you could do to have a win and, and then acknowledge and celebrate that win. That helps you celebrate it yourself. Don't proclaim it to the world, but celebrate it yourself that you are becoming a better person with this, these micro wins. You are growing as a person that helps you to become more confident. And I'll make a plug here for the five building blocks of a happy gay life. This is something that we're talking about, uh, a characteristic we're trying to adopt within the five building blocks of a happy gay life and the happy, healthy, wealthy gay men's toolbox. So if this inspires you, maybe consider uh, getting those two tools for yourself. Right. All right. Point number three here is that most LGBT leaders that are effective, they actually deliver the goods, <laughs> right? Important. Right. And, and I think, you know, this is probably one of the most important. If anybody wants to be a lead, leader, whether you're queer or not, you have to be able to deliver when you're asked to do something. Ultimately, if you cannot do that, if you cannot, uh, deliver on what you have been asked to do, you're not going to be looked at as a leader or as an, uh, as someone who they should provide more opportunity to lead. So we oftentimes say under promise and over, over deliver, right? So this gives you the opportunity to really set your own boundaries as to what you will deliver and then try to exceed that. Now, obviously, sometimes those boundaries are going to be set by <laughs> a senior manager or somebody above you, especially in the workplace. But if you can deliver on what they've been asking, especially if you deliver in a way that they are looking for or appreciate or maybe faster or more effect cost effectively, that's the kind of thing that helps build your confidence and it helps build you as an individual in the company as someone that turn to to lead exactly and if you're trying to figure out well how do you how do you create the uh, or have the um, tools to be able to over deliver um, there are a couple of things that you can do and some things that we would suggest are think about what you're consuming on a daily basis um, what do you what are you listening to what podcasts are you listening to or radio shows are you listening right. to what tv or youtube videos are you watching what type of education material are you reading or even are you a member of a uh, Udemy or any sort of sites like that, that uh, or masterclass. Look at how you can sort of, um, that you don't necessarily need to invest a lot of money, but look at all the different tools that are available to you that can help you increase your skills, help you increase your vocabulary, um, help you sort of improve yourself as a, as a more articulate person um, so that you can exude that air of, of confidence and also over deliver when it's time to. Right. And I'll just add there, one of the best ways to do this is to actually have a conversation with your boss or maybe your boss's boss and ask, what is it that the, that the team or the company is looking for? What kinds of skills do we need that I can learn that will help place me in a position to be able to help the team or the company grow and do well? Okay. Tip number four here. Maybe our production team can add <laughs> screeching break sounds here. <laughs> the most effective LGBTQ leaders. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, <laughs> Avoid drama. <laughs> right. This is an interesting one. It's an interesting one, but it's, it's, it's factual one. It's, you know, it's, we can so easily get caught up in drama, things that aren't important. I think that's evidenced today by how crazy apoplectic people get when they see a, a tweet or they see a Facebook post. Um, even who cares if you disagree with it? Um, but people go, you know, crazy about it and they get all angry and upset and uh, about all this drama that's actually unimportant and not influencing change or affecting change in any way, shape or form. We kind of, this is sort of the result of the 24 hour news cycle. It's really just kind of bombarding us with more drama, more drama, more drama, not actually helping anybody. Right. Um, just creating a lot of low level, level negative vibration. And we don't want to be a part of that. Uh, it's too easy to get caught up in that. Um, it's low level vibration that attracts the wrong people and it repels the right people into our lives. Um, so you want to, you want to, balance that. This isn't to say that effective LGBTQ leaders don't have challenges to face. Right. And it, it isn't to say that uh, they haven't had um, some consequences or some challenges with being LGBTQ, but they've figured out how to navigate that and they don't let that consume them. And then they don't, of course, get caught up in, in unnecessary um, superficial drama. Drama right. is often just gossip. Right. It's not true and it can be very hurtful to others. And it's actually not helping you as the person who's spreading or, or being a part of the drama. Right. Well, and I think that's it. Drama is exciting. 
I'll admit it, right? It's a distraction oftentimes, and it's stuff that um, more often than not kind of titillates us and gets us excited about what's going on in the world or what's going on in our community or what's going on in our friends group. Um, but if it's drama in the workplace, then you really, really need to be cautious, right? Because that's the kind of uh, getting involved with something like that could actually end up to leading to some sort of maybe uh, reaction by a leader, or maybe you are involved in something that could end up leading to punitive actions against you, right? Either by your company or maybe legally, you don't want to get it, put yourself in that kind of situation. So stay away from the drama. <laughs> yeah, it could have legal consequences, but even so, it's just creating a bad environment for yourself and the people around you. And you don't want to be around people who have drama. You want to be around people who have more important things to talk about and to do and to contribute because you're going to be a contributor. Right. And then number five, the most, uh, most effective LGBTQ leaders, they give back. Give, give, give. That's what we always say, right? It's important to give because when you're in a position of leadership, that oftentimes means that you have the opportunity to give. You have come from a place where you've learned from others. You're standing on the shoulder of others. Other people have helped get you into that position of leadership. I'm not saying that you didn't try to do something to get yourself there, but when you are a leader, you have the opportunity to give to others to help them lead as well. And I think this is really important when we look back on what has happened in our own community right, the LGBT community, there are LGBT leaders within the queer community that have come up because of other LGBT leaders, right? We, we, do, we did not get the, I will say the vast majority of us today are, are sitting in a place of privilege. The fact that we sit in a place of privilege where we don't have to um, be worried that we're going to be thrown out of a bar or into the back of a police car because we went to a bar that's all queer people. Um, and we don't, a lot of times we don't fear for uh, our safety in ways that people did 20, 30, or 40 years ago. And that privilege is because of other leaders. So let's pay it forward by giving to those who will be future leaders. So these are just five of the LGBTQ leader traits that the LGBTQ community needs. We need more of that. We need more people um, to be, have those characteristics and to lead us. If you want to be an LGBTQ leader, and we hope that you do, <laughs> start doing the work to make these personal traits yours. And stay tuned for your Queer Money Takeaway. Thank you again for listening to another episode of the Queer Money Podcast. So here's your Queer Money Takeaway from this episode. Pick one of these five traits, the ones that we just discussed on how you become, can become a leader. Pick one that maybe you are deficient in or one you don't have altogether and learn and master that trait. Move through all five traits and try to become an effective leader. And then look out for next week's episode where we continue to have this discussion around LGBTQ financial independence. And we are discussing the different types of financial independence or what a lot of people call FIRE. Then please remember that we make the Queer Money podcast for you. So please post your Queer Money questions in the Queer Money Facebook group. and We may answer your question in an upcoming episode. Thank you. And we'll talk with you next week.